Wouldn't you know, the day I come out to film this whole review, it's super windy. So most of this will probably happen in the garage. But while I have it out, I can get some sweet insert footage. You can look at all the wear that I put on it coming out here. A lot of people ask about adventure bikes and why you would do it and what it does have in it. Uh, dude, it's it sounds really dumb to just say it's to adventure in. You can do a lot of stuff with these things. This is actually my commuter slash adventure bike, so it spends kind of dual duty doing each of those. Look at how much cargo I have on there. I think it's like 50 liters for that box. I think that one is about 37 off the top of my head, and I think that one's 10 or 20, I don't know. That's a lot of storage space you get that you can use for all kinds of gear. Uh, these are hiding out K60s on there. These do a lot to get you around. As long as you air them down properly, and run them right, they're really good in the dirt, especially for this way to bike. So this, if you're looking at them, you wonder, what would I ever do with it? I think the adventure bike really shines when you come out west and you have places with lots of government land that you can kind of shoot on, or you have your own. You know, you have a big highway slog from civilization or town, wherever you're coming from, and you gotta run your way out there. You want good mileage on that huge, you know, hour to two hour slog on the hard top and you want to get good mileage while you're doing that. But then when you get to the dirt, you want to be able to carry equipment. You want to be able to go there relatively comfortably, and you want to just be able to go as far as you need to. And we did the dirt bike thing. We did the KTMs, the KTM 350 and the 500. They are fantastic dirt bikes, and they blow this away in every single metric when you're just looking at dirt riding. But in the end, you don't really want to run your hardcore dirt knobbies for an hour and a half on the freaking highway. This thing, in contrast, I was carrying those. Those are loaded up with ammo and some other stuff and, you know, like spare tire, all that crap. Not spare tire, but uh, plugs and compressors and all that. I got it into the dirt, aired it down. You know, my mileage has dropped a little bit. I'm looking at 39.9 just for the dirt portion. On the way in here, I was about 45, fighting some pretty stiff headwinds. You know, and it was comfortable. Getting it in here, you, I'll throw in some footage. You can see that I'm not like a good dirt rider by any means, but I do take it real slow and cozy. I don't like laying this thing down. As you can see, I've done it a lot. I'm not that good of a dirt rider, so I ride my limits. I keep it nice and cozy, and you can see all those. This red is actually a vinyl wrap job that I did. Uh, yeah, I busted my hand once. I was uh, out of it for about, I don't know, six months or so, just hanging out and I just wanted something to do, so I started looking at that. And at the time, I was really into the Multistratas, and I was like, oh, dude, it'd be cool to do that same color. So if you look, all of that, that's just stuff I did by hand and cut up. And you can see, like, there's a Band-Aid that I did. There's another one. The original paint was the first year, the 2012, that they did. It had, like, that Lisa Frank gloss sparkle. It looked pretty bad, and uh, just from wearing, like, dirt armor, it got really scratched up and busted. So yeah, I just wrapped it and that's been able to hold up pretty well. These are much better crash bars. An adventure bike is a pretty niche object as far as your bike stable's concerned. You can do a lot with it, but I think it depends a lot on the environment you live in. For those guys that live maybe out in the East Coast, if you just have some fire roads where you can't do too much, you know, if you're just bouncing through a wilderness area or something and on your way out, I don't know if I'd essentially love doing that. An adventure bike to me, at least in my usage, it goes towards a purpose. You know, for this, this is my like shooting and hiking bike. This is what I'll take with me if I wanna go trail running. I have enough space and storage to throw all my crap together. I can go out, run, change, come back to the trailhead. It's awesome, you know, I can go to these places that are far away from wherever I'm at at the time. You know, if it's like three hours away from my freaking apartment, I'm not gonna kill myself thinking I'm getting 19 miles a gallon to my truck or something like that. Whereas, you know, this, I'm getting 45 to 55, depending on how gingerly I use that throttle. It allows me to really expand my range and save some money at the same time, in addition to making that commute a lot more fun. Anywhere I'm going, I'm gonna enjoy a hell of a lot more in this, as opposed to some ox cart truck driving around like that. I don't know. I know, everyone loves trucks. I, uh, I kinda hate driving them, not super enjoyable. You can't, like, exploit gaps in traffic, and you can't go quick. It just kinda sucks doing it this way. So very cool bike to have. As far as bikes go, this little DL650 V-Strom. It's a great bike. It does give up some things. The stock suspension is about the only thing I really need to change still. It sucks total ass. And you can see I take it really slow when I'm out here. For me, an adventure bike is meant to get me from A to B. And I really don't like dumping it as much if I have to, you know, concede some speed on my way there. I'll happily do that as long as I'm not, you know, 
know, laying her down too many times. This one's been pretty fortified. You can tell it's got a bunch of mods. Check out my V-Strom review if you really want to see how I've kitted this one out. Like everything else, it's always continuing as they make better things. And as better parts get on the used market, I'm always eager to check them out. So yeah, if you're looking for something to get you from A to B, save some money, have some fun, that's what an adventure bike's for, man. I don't know if I would necessarily count on it to be like a two-up touring bike. I know that's something people talk about a lot. They always say, oh, you know, my, my wife, my girlfriend, she can hop on the back or, you know, take my buddy out there. I've done the dirt riding in a two-up configuration and it is not enjoyable. You really are working that suspension. It's not comfortable. You're, you know, fighting as to when you're leaning and all that stuff. I mean, you can do it, but I wouldn't count on it being fun or enjoyable. So you can tell this one's been pretty well squared away for stuff. Check out an adventure bike though. I don't know if I would necessarily go out and pay 19 or 20,000 for one, especially if I'm using it like this, cause I mean, as gingerly as I can drive it, I'm still dumping it all the time. You can see I've taken off parts of the cladding here. I got rid of that. I put that, that's from an old computer as a hard drive to kind of obscure some of those wires in there to keep punks from cutting them up. So I wouldn't do this with a Multistrad. I've, you know, I've ridden one of those before. I want something cheap. That's where the Strom shines. You can see all this scrape in here, and that's, I mean, these are relatively new. You know, it's wrapped. This body panel is relatively cheap. Pretty much all this is pretty cheap compared to something Ducati makes. The SV650 power plant in this thing is bulletproof. So if I'm looking at an adventure bike, I want to think about spare parts and how much of a hassle it is. Spoked wheels are usually pretty good if you get the little, you know, wire ones. I know the XT that they came out with like two years after this one has them, so I'm waiting for some of those to show up on the used market. But you really want to look at those because if you're running with low tire pressure and high speeds, you'll end up bending a rim and that's usually uh, four to eight hundred bucks depending on the wheel from the sound of it. I know the Strom of like this type I think was about 380. But check all that out, man. That is a lot of sport storage space that I can push pretty much anything I need to in. You know, you can camp and that's not even using the passenger seat. If you want to use that and rack stuff on there, like I have a big loop bag, I keep that on my FJR right now, but you can toss all kinds of gear in there. Granted, once you get up there and wait, the little 650 is going to be straining to get you there. But dude, that's a lot of storage you can really put to use. And then you have nice little camping chairs once you're out there. As you can tell, this one's pretty sunk in. And that ding is actually from getting knocked around by some steel targets that I carried one time. Had them lashed to there. So yeah, dude, adventure bikes. Not much of a scalpel when it comes to road riding. May not be the most fun thing in a canyon, but I mean, dude, let's see an R1 get out here.